Grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ who gathers us here on this crisp Sunday morning. Today we are celebrating World Communion Sunday. It's a really special day for me personally as we recognize that the church spreads across cultures and geography and time and space. And today I'm channeling my home church from Transylvania. I'm wearing, um, well, a modern version of a traditional dress from central Transylvania. In uh, times past, people would dress up in their ethnic clothes for Sunday worship. And so it's kind of remembering that, you know, my roots this morning as we think of the world church. I welcome all of you visitors here. It's good to see you with us. I also greet you those who are joining us online. I'm the Reverend Dr. Enrico Ferenci. I'm the pastor of Westminster Church. I encourage you to sign in so that we know that you worshiped with us this morning. Before we begin our service, I just have one brief announcement, actually two. Next Sunday is going to be our walking in mindfulness exercise at the park. It's a contemplative walk. We'll gather at 7.30 at Oak Hill Pavilion for a brief reflection and then walk around the trail in a contemplative mode. And then if we want, uh, we gather back for a sharing. I hope you join us. I know it's early, but it's a lovely experience. And it may be the last in the season, depending on the weather. And then just a reminder that since today is World Communion Sunday, we are collecting the global peace and witness offering that contributes to efforts of healing and uh, reconciliation that our denomination is engaged with across the globe. With that, let us now open our hearts and minds and let us worship God. Buenos dias. If you're able, please join and, and stand as we do the gathering words. From north and south and east and west, all creation sings forth your praises. The mountains and the hills burst into song. Your steadfast love never ceases. Let us pray. God of all nations, you have poured out your blessings upon all the peoples of the earth. Grant us eyes to see your gifts of faith and love. Appoint us as heralds of your mercy that are new every morning. 
Empower us to write the vision of your peaceable knowledge, where destruction and violence are no more, where suffering and war shall cease. Through our worship, empower us to be sent out with joy as bearers of your hope in a hurting world. <coughs> Through Christ, amen. I think we should stay seated first, please. Before we do the next hymn, I like to remind you about this hymn a little bit. We haven't sung it for about a few years, I think. So I and Tom will, will help you along here. I will sing the, the hymn for you first. There are two parts in it. You can see that there's a, there's a chorus part, the first line and the half of the second line, and then there are verses. There are three verses. I'll start with the chorus first. Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. So that's Saranam, not Saranam. And it means come. So I sort of. I think it's easy enough. Would you sing with me, please? Here we go, Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. You my rock, you my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. A minus, good. Uh, let's go to the verse. You sound very good there. I'll sing the verse for you and uh, let's see if you're doing fine. We'll, we'll quit learning. But from the earth wherever I may be, out of desperation and through agony, I cry in helplessness, oh answer me, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. I can't hear you very well, but do you feel okay? Let's do the whole thing now, you can stand, please. Refrain. Jesus, Lord, now to you I come. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. You're my rock. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. From the earth, wherever I may be, out of desperation, though of agony, I cry in helplessness, oh, answer me. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, now to you I come. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. In your heart give me a hiding place And beneath your wings let me a shelter in grace Oh let me share the sunshine of your face Saranam, Saranam, Saranam Jesus save your Lord now to you I come Saranam, Saranam, Saranam you're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, saranam, saranam. Then with joy to you my vows I'll pay and give thanks for all your mercy every day. I humbly follow in your perfect way. Saranam, saranam, saranam. Jesus, save your Lord, now to you I come. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. You're my rock, my refuge, my heavenly home. Saranam, Saranam,
From Timothy, we hear about the idea of <clears throat> confession. God's grace was given to us in Christ before the ages began. In spite of God's love for us and gift of love to us, we often act in destructive and hateful ways. Trusting in Christ's mercy that never ends, let us walk with honesty, confess our sins before God and one another, praying together. Gracious God, you treated the whole world and called it good. But we look out at your world and see division and suffering. You call us to maintain the unity of spirit and the bond of peace. But we choose division over mercy, confrontation over civility, conflict over peace born from justice. You call us to love and be smooth. But we hear the cries of the oppressed and choose our own comfort. We allow senseless suffering rather than sacrifice for our neighbors. Forgive us, grant us fresh vision to see one another as siblings in Christ. We handle our your gifts, the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline that was might be made in heart, bring forth your peaceful kingdom. Amen. From Lamentations, we hear our assurance of forgiveness. We call to mind your promises, and therefore we find hope. Believe the good news. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we gather before you in thanksgiving and in gratitude for the ways you build us up as a community. And we ask you today that you send your spirit into us, renew us, renew our hope, so that we may live as your people who are workers of peace. In your name we pray. Amen. On this World Communion Sunday, our scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah. It's um, a passage that contains the theme verse for the global peace and witness offering campaign of our denomination. It's a vision of Isaiah of the world that God desires for all. So let us listen from Isaiah chapter 55, selected verses and then a few verses from 56. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, make it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. Happy is the mortal who does this, the one who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and refrains from doing evil. Do not let the foreigner joined to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from God's people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose the things that please me and hold fast to my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to God, to love the name of the Lord, and to be God's servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Since today we are recognizing the church, the worldwide church, I felt that it was important to hear voices from various parts of the world. And I interviewed this past week people who are mission co-workers with the Presbyterian Church USA, our denomination. And I would like to share some of the insights they um, shared with me. I asked them to say, where do they see hope? or if that's too difficult of a question to answer in the midst of all the turmoil and the conflict and war and natural disasters that we witness these days, I ask them to reflect on where do they find meaning in what they do. So here come some of the thoughts that they shared with me. The first one um, is Cindy Correll. I have uh, spoken about her before. She is a mission coworker of our denomination in Haiti. And she, for the last two years, has been serving from Virginia mainly because of all the violence that's taking place in Haiti. Our denomination feels like it's better for not only her, but the community where she was serving because they would be protecting her and she would be an extra burden and this way our denomination is still supporting that community financially and Cindy is working um, remotely with the community that she's been engaged with for long years. She started serving in Haiti in 2013 so it's a long-term partnership and she works with um, Farmers Association, Fandama. So I asked her about hope, and I have a little 
video clip of some of our conversation. As I was reaching out to some of you, I also uh, messaged uh, Doug Dix. I don't know if you know him. He's in uh, Palestine, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, can you just, you know, share some message of hope? And he's like, I don't know if you are talking to the right person if you want to message about hope. And I'm like, you know, being real is also important because that's a first step uh, towards yeah. making anything better, right? Or trying to do something that helps the world get into a better place. Well, sometimes, sometimes though, doing the good things is just staying in it and walking with the people. Yeah, right, right. And it's because the situation in Haiti is just miserable right now. It's yeah. mm -hmm. it's frightening. It is, um, the gangs have, you know, the gangs are, are the power players mm -hmm. um, and they're violent and they're recruiting and they can, they make money from the kidnappings. So they have the power in many ways, brute power, economic power. Mm -hmm. And so you're with your partners and you're with your people who are having their own difficulties. So the hope is just walking with them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. It makes it even harder. I mean, every mission coworker in the world, I know every mission coworker from our church mm -hmm. is walking a tougher path than we walked three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But we haven't quit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't stopped. We're not going to stop. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's no power we have. Mm -hmm. except to speak the truth mm -hmm. and to hopefully get the ear of those in power mm -hmm. um and that work goes on that go work goes on among people from haiti and among many of the advocates for haiti but um you know it's the it's the most challenging most fulfilling work i know of mm -hmm. So the uh, denomination is not sending you back because of these reasons, right? That it would be still the same safety yeah, concern be, for you and for the community. Yeah. yeah. And the resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just sent in the lease to my house, though. Mm -hmm. So there's <laughs> there's one family that's getting able to rent the house that they are renting out. And I don't know if so many people are leaving Haiti, so many expats are leaving Haiti. Um, they just can't remain. So that's an economic problem for people, for individuals. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that our denomination is sticking with me and sticking with the people in my house and st sticking uh, with the people who own my house that are, mm -hmm. you know, receiving those rent, the rent money. So all you can do is be there with them. That's the reality right now. Mm -hmm. So on World Communion Sunday, what do we say? The only thing I can say is pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. Understand it. Get out of your bubble if you're in a bubble. Mm -hmm. If you spend most of your time, like many people in this country do, creating and sustaining your own comfort and the comfort of your family, just imagine what you can sacrifice, even if it's your mental even if it's your mental um, uh, bandwidth and your emotional and spiritual bandwidth to hear the news of what goes on around the world and not just around the world, in the neighborhood next door to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we as, I think we as Christians, um, we're comfort seekers and we need to be comfort makers. And it's hard, it's hard to comfort others when you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. I think it's impossible maybe mm. because in order to comfort a crying baby, you're up at two o'clock in the morning, aren't you? That's right. Yeah. And in order to comfort somebody who just came out of a disaster, you're standing in the cold, wet rain with them. So we've got to be the comfort makers. is a mission co-worker, has been uh, in Ghana for close to 20 years now, and uh, he is also serving in the capacity of regional liaison for West Africa. 
So he travels all over in those countries in West Africa and we could only exchange messages because he currently is visiting Togo and they did not have good enough internet connection for us to be able to have a conversation. But uh, he sent a few thoughts that I would like to share with you. He says that, I think there is a wonderful church life in Ghana that we in the US need to learn from. There is an incredible empowerment of the people in the church, such that the members preach, pray, lead liturgy, and also lead small groups of the church. It's so different than in Western congregations where everything is the pastor. So watch out, because I'm coming after you. I think churches are doing well here because of the way members are empowered and supported. There's always been talk that Christian life is somehow foreign to African culture, but honestly, I think it's perhaps also, if not more so, foreign to Western life. Christianity doesn't necessarily speak to the life of people in the US. But I think it's learned to speak very well to the challenges and struggles of everyday life in Ghana. Maybe it will change as the country gets richer and there are other options out there. But I think the church in the US could learn a lot on how to speak again to the spiritual needs of people in their daily lives. Joshua is living in Accra and he worships when he's there regularly in one of the communities there. And I just have a little clip of a praise dance that happens during worship in the Presbyterian Church as they bring the offering and they express the joy for God's gifts and God's guidance in life. Tony, would you? Would you show the next slide or um, this is the congregation where uh, Joshua has his home base, and uh, this is um, a Sunday when they had, were celebrating a baptism, but the dance you saw is a dance of thanksgiving. So there are many ways of being Presbyterian, and it doesn't mean to be frozen into <laughs> gloom, right? Um, Then from Ghana, let us now move to Europe, to Berlin. Ryan and Alethea White are mission co-workers who serve in the Irani Presbyterian congregation in Berlin. They have also been there since 2013. That was a great year, it seems like. A lot of people started their uh, ministry that year. and. Uh, in recent years, they became regional liaisons for Central and now Southern Europe as well. And uh, since the war broke out in Ukraine, they have been really connecting with partners in that region and uh, coordinating the aid work for uh, supporting relief efforts for refugees. We also have a little video clip of their thoughts. Alethe and I were talking to, and there wasn't, I don't know if we were able to come up with many tangible signs. This, this woman is writing, basically covering the different regions of the Middle East. But I was struck, especially with how she reflected on 
um, the young adults and young people in the region that despite all external factors have no reason to hope and yet are still um, continuing on, still finding mm -hmm. um, ways to search uh, for how to make their communities and societies better, to continue to be invested in the areas and the places where they live, even in the midst of war and um, economic uh, depression or in Palestine, as Doug probably reflected on um, the challenges that are there. Um, and in her hometown of Lebanon, going through lots of economic uh, of challenges. I was on a walk yesterday through our local neighborhood area. It happened to be in our area, but it was a, the purpose was to connect or to visit different um, churches. It was a kind of ecumenical walk. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was, I was struck um, by the way that the communities facing all sorts of different challenges, coming out of COVID and other things, and just the dynamics of church. Even um, they remain places where people gather together um, to to pray, to worship. Yes. Um, but they gather together and in the gathering, they find deep meaning and encouragement. We ended at the, I guess it's the Syriac Armenian church. Um, we ended there and the man speaking there said, the fact that the church exists is a miracle. He said, not just the church, the congregation there, but the history of his church. Mm -hmm. um, going all going back before the Armenian genocide. Um, but for much further back, um, even, uh, but that, that the church continues and is a place where people gather together, um, the, the prayers and the rituals that are said, um, and I don't really know what else to say, except that people continue on, um, and, it's not maybe something to like say this is what my hope is in or this is where people find hope but the fact that people continue taking the step or people continue acting um to see the humanness in another mm -hmm. and not and defying the narrative that tries to pit us against one another to see each other as enemy but the fact of seeing the humanness in in another in need and um that that is moves people to compassion and to acts of compassion not just a pity and compassion but to, to acts of to acting okay i was on the i'm even though we're in northern ish europe um we i also sit on the southern europe europe partnership network that's just getting started in the last year i would say um and so the the partners there are really like in Italy and Greece and Spain and Portugal. So especially Italy and Greece, they're receiving just like huge numbers of migrants. And the structure there is, is I mean, I don't think the structure anywhere is adequate for that, actually. But there they especially struggle and with what's going on politically in Italy right now. So the Italian partners were like, this is just going to be a mess for us um, with the elections and and the new government. The one the one guy he's, um, he's working with Mediterranean Hope. He was just saying like, well, like this number of people die every day in the Mediterranean. It was like a huge number that you don't really think about um and and he was just talking about like what how much harder their job is going to be now with um coming changes in in policies from the government and that sort of thing uh, but he was and he's kind of like a hard guy like the work's not easy and he has a bit of a I was telling Ryan like he has a bit of a cynicism about him which I completely can understand but he he also has like a steadiness like he's not giving up basically and and even though he was saying and this is happening this is happening this is happening like all these things that are not going to be easy mm -hmm. it was basically like but we're just gonna Keep be on. here even mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i was actually really inspired by that um 
because in in all other circumstances when you have so many things against what you're trying to accomplish at some point it would make sense for some to just be like okay I'm, I'm done I'm done with this right but there's so many um personalities in in the different partnerships that we work with that that are convinced that this is what they should be doing uh, and exactly for the reasons that Ryan just said like because other people are human beings too and if we forget that or we don't see that for whatever reason then it's also a bit of it's also a loss for us like it's also a loss for our community and like on a global scale <laughs> so Mediterranean Hope is a migrant and refugee program that's um, initiated by the Federation of the Protestant Churches in Italy. And one of the main funders of this effort is the Waldensian Church. It's a tiny denomination. So again, it's just an example of a mustard seed of effort can make such a difference and giving hope they are monitoring the Mediterraneans in several locations, rescuing refugees and asylum seekers. And they started a program called Safe Corridors to uh, help people to be able to uh, seek asylum in a safe way and find the channels when they don't know the language and don't have any connections to be able to uh, have that safeguard around them and have people walk with them. So after this world tour, we come back to the US. And uh, the next couple that I want to introduce to you is, are not mission co-workers in that sense that the previous ones were. But Marty and Sandy Garcia are pastors of a new worshiping community in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's part of the 1001 new worshiping communities efforts are, of our denomination of planting churches in areas where there is a need. And so Martin and Sandy are in Fort Wayne in the southeast part of Fort Wayne. They say that this is the worst part of the city and it has a very diverse community and they are beginning to establish a little Presbyterian church there. So let us hear from them. Um, for me, I feel, even though it's going to be hard, I, I have hope that we can eventually uh, be a community where you see different cultures getting together, mm -hmm. um, celebrating um, us in service, for example. Um, we have a lot of different ethnicities right now around the neighborhood um, where Amistad is. We have Burmese, Afghans. Um, blacks, Latinos, white people, but everybody's always in their own little segregated bubble. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things we have at Amistad currently is a yoga class that the teacher is black and we had a transgender person there and some white people and black people already just taking this class, in including me. I think I'm the only Latina right now so far. <laughs> But that gives me hope that maybe it's, maybe it is attainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what gives me hope also is that we try to make a presence there that gives me hope. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you can really do more than you think that you can do. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even something as simple as it seems like getting a literacy center for the community. So I worked at Fort Wayne Community Schools and um, I'm no longer there, but I have a contact with the warehouse manager and they were going to throw away all of these children's books that are not old. They've, I recently used some of them in my classroom. So we have, uh, we can get as many books as we want and we have a little library, you know, those little libraries that are in the communities, yeah, they're just yeah. little. Yeah. One of the guys from First Presbyterian Church is building or has, he's, he's painting it now. So we're mm -hmm. gonna have a little library out there for um, 
families, kids to come and grab a book, take a book, you know, and we can keep adding more books to it. So it's even in the little things that sometimes people think they have to do this huge, you know, so there's two things I'm learning is one, it's, it can be small. It seems small, but it might not be. It might be a big thing. And mm -hmm. the other thing is it, it does take time, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Little steps, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have been connected with, connecting with electric, elected officials. And we just connected with this office of the mayor, thanks to uh, another member of First Presbyterian Church. And, and he used to be a city council for many, many years. So he connected us and um, this, the city is going to be doing um, um, revitalization process to the Southeast area of the city. Uh, and that's where our church is. Mm -hmm. um, and that's technically the worst area of the city. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they have asked us to, to do the, one of the hearings that they are going to have for for all the communities they are going to do it in our church mm -hmm. so we are very excited about that as well and and that things are happening right so mm -hmm. So I think we see all these examples where people are stepping out into these new areas where they don't know what exactly is going to come, but they find the courage and the inspiration to dream of what could be a place where all are welcome and where needs are met. Doug Dix is a mission co-worker in Palestine, and I saw him during General Assembly this summer here, and we talked um, on the phone a few days ago. And I thought that, you know, the way he was reflecting on what gives him hope and where he finds meaning is a good um, charge for us as we move forward in our community because he said that, you know, as uh, if you are following the news, you know that the situation in Israel-Palestine is just getting ever more complicated. And in recent weeks, there has been an uptick of violence against Palestinians. There have been so many killed in just the last uh, two months. And so he was like, I'm not the person to speak about hope, but what gives him meaning, he said that it's, he feels really called to make everything in his power to nurture the younger generations so they can have hope because without that there is no way forward. And so to think about what can we do to nurture the generations to come. And he said that we need to be thinking more clearly about where Jesus would walk, with whom would he meet, whom would he talk, how would he challenge the powers that be? How can we follow in his footsteps in all these various ways? And he then repeated what has been echoed through all these conversations, to be present with people, to be there where people are in their joys and in their sorrows and making those connections paying attention, as Cindy said, listening to what the hopes and the yearnings are, and then participating in their life, being there as fellow sojourners. Doug says that what he found as he leads tour groups and as he introduces people uh, to the situation, the conflict in Israel-Palestine, and he brings them into the community and helps them meet folk on the ground, that as their perception changes, that he sees the hope that as one person at a time, there is some change and there is a bigger vision that that person gains. He feels like that is a sign of hope. 
So I hope that as we move forward um, in, on our journey, that we'll find inspiration that small communities like ours are able to nurture and to be present in meaningful ways as Joshua challenges churches here in the US to speak to the reality of daily life and to help people find meaning and find that spiritual groundedness that we receive uh, from the Spirit. So may we go forth and find the joy on our journey that comes from being in meaningful relationships and building community. May it be so. Amen. Friends, we are invited into a feast, a symbol of the abundance that God promises and God desires for all of us. And on this World Communion Sunday, we celebrate this feast in the presence of all our siblings near and far and May we commit to living in ways that there are no hungry ones going around when God is providing us. Let us share our resources. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is not even a Westminster table. It is the table of God where God wants all God's children to be welcomed. So let us come and be nourished so that we can work for peace for all. Please join me in prayer. You, O oh great creator, started providing your gifts for us from the very beginning. 
long after Jesus first gathered his friends around the table in an upper room. Your Holy Spirit has continued meeting us at tables. Handcrafted tables painted with intricate designs and weathered park benches that serve as a place to eat when needed. Tables that are surrounded by friends and families and tables where only one, one seat is filled. No matter what each table looks like, the food that is served or the people gathered around it, your spirit meets us still. For your ever-present spirit, O oh God, we give thanks. As we celebrate your joyful feast today with our siblings in Christ around the world, we are aware that no amount of singing can hide, can hide the sound of grumbling stomachs and parched throats. Help us to trust in your promise as we eat this bread and drink this cup, may we trust that there is enough to go around. Keep us from hoarding what you have provided so that all your children might taste and see, drink and be satisfied. God of abundance and of peace, we pray for all eating spaces around the world today where believers are gathering despite risk and suffering. We pray for chairs that are empty, where loved ones used to sit. For tables in places of conflict, where bullets fly and bombs rain down. For spaces that have been ravaged by hurricanes, floods and fires. We pray also for eating spaces that are emotionally unsafe this day. Tables where tensions are high and certain topics are off limits. Placemats that are not set for someone because of the way they look, who they voted for, or who they love. For all these spaces, tables and chairs where your children gather, Lord, we pray for your peace. God of the joyful feast, Today, in the north and in the south, in the east and in the west, we are grateful as we meet you around tables full of gifts you have given us. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us so that when the meal is over and we leave this table, we might be a part of extending every table around the world. Help every meal we share look more and more like your heavenly feast. Everyone welcomed, everyone fed, everyone nourished. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And now let us join our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our God in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, Jesus shared meals often with friends, with strangers, and on the night when he was betrayed, he did the same. He took bread, he lifted it, broke it, and giving thanks, he said, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. The same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and giving thanks, he said, this is the cup of new covenant, the promise of abundance, of new beginnings. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. For every time 
We drink, eat this bread and drink this cup. We remember the promise of God for each one of us. Amen. Friends, let us come and share in the feast. We'll walk up and uh, partake in the bread and the juice. If you are not comfortable taking, sharing in the common plate, we have a few packets, individual packets prepared, and just uh, let us know and we can give it to you. If you are not comfortable walking up, just raise your hand or I, I will be watching and will come and serve you. Jim, would you come and help me?
Gracious God, thank you for the nourishment that we received today. May we remember your promise as we go forward and live as people empowered and with a vision to create the world where no one suffers need and no one goes hungry and all people can flourish. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, as the Syriac Armenian pastor in Berlin reminded Ryan and Althea, it's a miracle that the church is still around. God is moving through time and space and working through us as individuals and as communities to bring God's kingdom where all can flourish about. So may we go out bravely in the face of uncertainty and turmoil and sadness and be praying and singing and dancing and doing God's work and bringing joy to all that we encounter. And as we go, may we know the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who accompany us today and every day forward. Amen. <laughs>